As one of the pioneers of research beyond the realms of Earth, NASA has seen a lot of successful missions in its history of launches. However, there have been a couple of hiccups in this journey. One situation was when NASA had no contact with their Voyager 2 for nearly a year until November 2021, when they were finally able to re-establish a connection with their craft. So why was NASA not able to communicate with the Voyager? And what response was finally received? Stay tuned to find out. Ever since humans first started launching spacecrafts, there have only been five successful crafts that possess the energy to leave the gravitational pull of our solar system. Both the Voyagers are part of this list. Voyager 1 has passed all previous spacecraft and is currently the most distant at 22 billion kilometers away. Moving away from Voyager 2, which is just a mere 18.8 .8 billion kilometers away, NASA had no contact with Voyager 2 since the coronavirus epidemic in mid-March. However, an upgraded Deep Space Network dish made a successful connection on November 2nd. The logic behind the distance and communication is that the further the spacecraft is from Earth, the longer the signal takes to arrive, and the signal strength is also lower. The energy consumed to send these signals from further out is also significantly higher. The distance is equivalent to laying out over 500,000 planets as big as Earth next to each other. The way an electromagnetic signal works is simple. It spreads out in a spherical shape from its source, whether you detect it using a refracting lens, a reflecting dish which NASA just used, or a linear antenna. Also, any observation you make from both earthly and celestial sources have some underlying background noise. Your signal must cross a specific threshold to be visible, rising above the noisy background. That implies larger detectors are better on the receiving end, while a high-powered transmitter is better on the broadcasting end. Unfortunately, the NASA spacecraft that has already been launched will not be able to have the hardware upgraded in any way. Once launched, they'll be stuck with the technology they were given. To make matters worse, the spacecrafts are powered by radioactive sources in which specifically chosen materials such as plutonium-238 radioactively decays and emits heat, which is then transformed into energy. As time passes, more of the material wears out, reducing the amount of power available to the spacecraft for both broadcasting and receiving signals. The conversion to electrical energy from heat energy becomes less successful as the amount of heat energy produced by radioactive material decreases. The material decays over time and loses efficiency as power lowers. As a result, the amount of power accessible to the spacecraft via the generators has dropped. As of 2021, the plutonium-238 aboard is only providing 69% of the initial heat energy, resulting in only about half of the original output power. Despite the fact that Voyager 1 and 2 are 43 years old and have traveled farther from Earth than any other operating spacecraft in history, they have not yet been lost to us. The rationale is simple. As our transmission and receiving capabilities increase on Earth, we will be able to send out more stronger signals that will be detected by these faraway spacecraft, as well as better identify their responses even at low strengths. NASA Deep Space Network is the key. This is a network of radio antenna built to communicate with humanity's farthest spacecraft. Around the world, there are three large radio antenna facilities, one in Canberra, Australia, one in Madrid, Spain, and the last one in Goldstone, California. These three sites are nearly equidistant across the globe, ensuring that at any given time, at least one of these antenna have the direct line of sight to the spaceship. Of course, this is still not 100% of the time, but it is mostly accessible. You may have noticed that the facility in Canberra, Australia is the only one in the world that is located in the Southern Hemisphere. If a spaceship is very far south, so far south that it is invisible from California or Spain, the Australian dish would be the only way to communicate with it. While all three of these facilities might theoretically contact Pioneers, New Horizons, and the Voyager 1 spacecraft, Voyager 2 is an anomaly for one key reason. It's 1989 flyby of Neptune and its gigantic moon, Triton. Even today, the mission to Neptune represents humanity's first close encounter with our solar system's eighth and last planet, last one as of now at least. 
as well as Triton, the last known object to originate in the solar system's Kuiper belt. The discoveries from that flyby were magnificent. With Neptune's ring system, a small number of inner moons, and a variety of features on Triton, such as cryovolcanoes and varied terrain, similar to what we would find 26 years later when New Horizons flew by Pluto. However, in order to get a close look at Triton, Voyager 2 had to fly past Neptune's North Pole, which deflected Voyager 2's course far south of the plane in which the planets orbit the Sun. It has remained on that trajectory for the past 31 years, rendering it invisible to every member of the Deep Space Network. That is, except for one dish in Australia. That dish, which carries the radio transmitter required to communicate with Voyager 2, has been shut down for modifications since mid-March 2020. The dish is a marvel of engineering in and of itself. A world-class radio antenna measuring 70 meters in length has been created. Two radio transmitters, one of which is used to deliver commands to Voyager 2, are among the devices attached to it. That instrument was 47 years old as of early 2020, and it hadn't been replaced in that period. It also had obsolete heating and cooling systems, outmoded and inefficient electronics, and a power supply system that prevented any prospective modifications. Fortunately, it was decided to upgrade all of them allowing NASA to accomplish something no other institution can, send directives to Voyager 2. While the spacecraft is still providing health updates and science data to a series of smaller dishes in Australia, it has been unable to accept commands, meaning it will continue to do what it is doing until new commands are received. On October 9, 2020, enough of the upgrades had been completed for Voyager 2 mission operators to perform a critical test, sending a set of orders to the spacecraft for the first time since the renovations began. The project manager of the Deep Space Network at NASA, Brad Arnold, said, What makes this task unique is that we're doing work at all levels of the antenna, from the pedestal at the ground level all the way up to the feed cones at the center of the dish that extend above the rim. Although a signal from Earth to Voyager 2 takes roughly 36 light hours to reach round trip, NASA declared on November 2nd that the test was successful. Voyager 2 responded with a signal confirming that the call had been received and that the commands had been executed successfully. This test communication with Voyager 2 definitely tells us that we're on track with the work we're doing, Arnold says. NASA has considered this makeover as one of their most significant breakthroughs in the past couple of decades, since it helped them re-establish communication with a piece of technology that once many thought was a lost cause. As Voyager 2 and other fleeing spacecraft continue to distance from the Sun, their power levels will continue to drop, making it increasingly difficult to transmit commands and receive data. However, as long as the antenna that are part of NASA's deep space network stay functional, even at exceedingly low and wasteful power levels, we may continue to update and engage them. Simply upgrading our facilities here on Earth will allow us to collect data for years, if not decades to come, as long as these satellites stay operating in some form. So, that is all you need to know about the Voyager 2 and how it re-established communication with the folks over at NASA. Despite its decreasing power, do you think the Voyager will keep sending signals? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.